Um, hi Royal Kingdom Estate family, I hope you guys are doing great and energized because I feel amazing right here at Agboba. We are live at Academic City University and this is where we're having the African Diaspora Conference 2024 and Royal Kingdom Estate being official partners of course we had to come in, take coverage, have some interviews and you know set the ball rolling. What are we looking forward to for today? It's so packed. We have a panel of nation builders that are going to be speaking to the industry, you know, talking about the problems and solutions that we're facing um, when it comes to the real estate sector in Ghana. We're going to be, you know, sharing ideas, mingling, networking, and making connections as well. Partnerships are very, very important. So stay glued. We'll be back with so much more. right now is the president and CEO of Royal Kingdom Estates, Mr. Danny Angels. Hello, sir. How are you? Hi. Doing? How are you, Adria? I'm good. Um, we're here. You've seen how the environment is, how everything is going. First of all, I want to highlight on the fact that Royal Kingdom Estates were official partners wow. for the Diaspora Africa Conference 2024. How did this partnership come about? So Royal Kingdom Estate, you know, and the Diaspora, yeah. we, 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 we go, go way hand back. Hand, exactly. We go hand in hand, you know. As you're aware, 90% of our clientele base mm -hmm. are based in the diaspora. Exactly. So anything that has got to do of people of African descent, yeah. the diaspora, mm -hmm. Royal Kingdom Estate mm -hmm. wants to be there. And yeah. we are excited to be part of this. Exactly. Not just part of this, as partners, as sponsors, mm -hmm. to make sure that this event takes place and yeah. is successful. Yeah. yeah. Can you please highlight on the importance of this particular conference? One, to you as a partner, and two, to the entire real estate section in Ghana. We need to bridge the gap. Yeah. As you are aware, there are a lot of opportunities in real estate in Ghana for the people of diaspora yeah. and us in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So what, it presents an opportunity for us to begin to uh, dialogue, to yeah. see how we can connect together, work together, create opportunities for Ghanaians here right. and the diaspora in general. Mm -hmm. And then what? Africa as a whole. That's so that is why we are associated yes. with this here. We do know that you're going to be on the panel right, 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 later. Right. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Just give us a little hint on what you're going to be talking about just so we anticipate. I want everybody to come and witness it. To be surprised. Let's do it, to be surprised. <laughs> All right, guys. So there you have it. We're going to go inside and listen to the entire panel. Just take from the knowledge that they're going to share and then see how all together this will impact the real estate space in Ghana and in Africa. Come on. Let's go right in. to invest in Africa and be successful, I am the reason why you have to invest in Africa. Oh, wow, okay! I'll tell you what, my name is Daniel Jones. I was born and bred in and raised in Africa. We build fortune through real estate without living in poverty. And being able to have about 90% of our clientele are diaphragm. Is why you have to invest in this place. When you talk about one stop shop real estate solution in Ghana, Royal Kingdom Estate is a home. We nurturing dreams and building communities. Thank well, you. so Mr. Daddy, if you can touch on why you think that people are being motivated to start investing right here in Ghana. Last in the last decade, there has been, through the year of the day, especially, there has opened up a lot of opportunities in the real estate space. And like my senior brother said earlier, because of the advent of social media, we have been able to tell our stories as Africans. And people thought that we were living on, on the trees and all that. I have been sleeping in the very good <laughs> and when people come down and they see the, the development, they see the architectural uh, uh, prowess of Ghana and Africa, they are mouthed. And it has opened a lot of opportunities. And I can say that the various segment of the market, there are opportunities in all these segments of the market, whether the lower end, the middle, or the luxury. That is what I have. 
Excellent, excellent. Now let's let's dig into some of the barriers. Very smiling, so I'm gonna start with you. What are some of the barriers that people have to overcome when they're looking to invest in Africa? So I will stick my hands up in two areas. The first one was uh, transparency, professionalism, and customer service. Mm. At the biggest of all. In the entire real estate spectrum is land acquisition. You cannot develop any sort of infrastructure without land. You can't build it in the air. So, what we have done, especially in the institute, a lot of due diligence. We have like a due diligence company where it works within our organization because if people cannot have access to litigation free land, how then do they come to invest in your country? So land acquisition has been the biggest big force under land administration. So there must be a lot of reforms in the land acquisition process of that. So that is uh, one of the barriers to that for uh, investment in real estate. Yeah, that's a great point with the land acquisition. You talked about customer service. And I want to add customer experience as well. You know, one of the key things I believe is that every customer you encounter should walk away and say, wow, what an experience. Um, I, I don't know if we're seeing a lot of that. These are nation builders. I mean, they're making a difference. Yes, a round of applause. I mean, they've built hundreds of homes across the nation, so that's incredible. So you touched on collective investment. Um, do you want to touch on that, Danny? What other type of innovative uh, financing models can we come up with when individuals are not able to get mortgage financing for banks? Because we all know the rates now are anywhere from 11 to 13 percent, and that's a base rate. I mean, they haven't even started adding the margins yet. So, touch on that. I think crowdfunding is a way to go. Crowdfunding, awesome. Yes, because if I go by the analogy reason, right? Imagine all the one dollar that is you guys invest in my business. <laughs> His business, yes. And, and I built millions of houses for the diaspora. Can you imagine what that would do? It would have built many nations. So, but before you can do that, you need to trust me. That's why I keep speaking about transparency, credibility. How somebody wants to invest in something they cannot trust. So once we can forge good partnerships, I mean, one dollar here, one CD here, that's here. We should be able to come together and do something wonderful. Because that's our organization, for instance, we don't go to the bank. We work with other people's money. And once you have the credibility, I have chiefs that are lining up, calling me, I the land here, I the land here, because they know you pay. So once you can pay, you can use your name, you can leverage on your host name, and what? Build a successful relationship without necessarily going to the bank or you must show credibility, transparency in your deals for people to trust you to give you their own Awesome, that's a good takeaway. So let's let's pull money together, crowdfunding, collective investments, fractional ownership, fantastic. You know, I, I always refer to the story of five friends in, in the US. They took fifty dollars a week, put it aside for two years and they were able to use that as a down payment on a multi-family unit. So whenever I talk about that, people say, no, 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 I don't trust my friends. Well, if you can party with your friends, you can go out with your friends, but you can't build with your friends, you better change your friends, right? So fractional ownership is key. What are the hesitations people have about going in these areas is the rooms. People complain about the roads. I mean, people were complaining about these big on hills, about the roads, the roads, and those same people are regretting that they were complaining about the roads. I mean, if you move in there and start a development, eventually the roads will catch up to that. The infrastructure will change. I love to call these emerging markets. And I love returns, and that's where you'll get high returns as well. So please go ahead, Danny. Anybody can build it at a city center. Once you have money, you see it yourself. But to go out of the comfort zone, and develop a city outside of the city. It's not a good. You need to be visionary to do that. For instance, let me tell you how we raised capital for this. So we started real estate. We went to the far outskirts, about maybe three hours away from the capital. We bought one acre. Once we sell, we started moving closer to the capital. 
So, like you said, you have one dollar. Just buy a property of one dollar anyway. So the target market at the time was a different demographic, different group of people. We go to the market women, we give them the payment for three years. They are paying 500 CD a month. So if you have about 1,000 people paying 500 CD a month, by the time you finish selling that, you build a stronger capital. Then we kept moving, we kept expanding. Now, I think black people, we need to change. Everybody wants to live close to their mouth. Why? <laughs> I need to know why. Evacuation purposes. What's the why? Those coming from abroad. Who is living at our fair? Everybody is close to their mouth. Why? <laughs> so I think we need to look uh, further and further. But I also understand the government, successive government, they are not developing those areas. Imagine that a project, a huge project, by let's say Parliament House, has been taken to, let's say, let's say show one. The infrastructure would have, would have reached those people. Banks would have gone there. Yes. But what we are doing is that we are doing something unique. We decided that we are going to come together and develop our country and our country. Mm. So we buy a large tract of land, we reduce the price and sell it really, really cheap. Then we put all of the buyers into a group called property owners bro. Now, we give them about two to three years to develop the type of home they want to develop, obviously we can assist them. Put them together, half the regular zoom meetings once a month. And these are African diaspora come across in Quedon, Sokola, Virgin Islands. Now, we are using this as a vehicle, as an instrument to bring our people together, live together. So we are using real estate as an instrument. So that way we are able to develop a community, build our infrastructure. So we can come together to begin to you know, develop the past and do those sort of uh, beautiful initiatives. Awesome, awesome. All right, time for QA, QA. My name is Dr. Tony Buck. I'm the founder of the African Legacy Trust, which is exactly what we want to do. We bring money from outside and we get people to have trust. That's why it's called the African Legacy Trust. So please come and see us. Let's talk about how we can put the trust. I don't have a question. I am so excited. I want to jump up. My hip just won't let me. Let's <laughs> hear for you. So there are three kinds of people that I've met over the years. Poor people who are always talking about money. Rich people who are always talking about things. And with these four men and one lady, who are wealthy people who are talking about ideas and the development of ideas. And in this time for Africa, we need wealth. We need people who are talking about sustainable wealth. And this panel, I'm so proud of you. You have just, I've been in Africa 41 years almost looking for you. So I am so honored to be in this room because each one of you, and especially John, I'm so excited that you understand collaboration and getting together because everybody wants to be in a silo. But the West did not build the West in a silo. They got together in 1844 and figured out how to take us. All those countries decided, okay, Britain, you take this, Spain, you take this, Germany, you take this, France, you take this. We have to have that kind of mindset. And that kind of mindset comes from people who have a wealth mentality. So I'm very proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I want to ask my big guys, if I may call you like that, um, how is the green building implementation uh, being effective in Africa? I'm asking this question because uh, I participate a lot in events like this, and I don't hear a lot of if we cut the trees and build these affordable and luxurious buildings, what are we doing next for Mother Nature? So that's my first question. Second question is how do you, from the developer, developer perspective, how do you manage with the fraudulent acts that are easily being? Um, attributed to the industry. The reason to develop cities is because we want to build self-sustainable, eco-friendly communities. And uh, a lot of 
real estate companies, including us, we are doing that. Uh, if you cut a tree, you must plant about 10. So it's part of your contract. You don't just come in and you don't want to turn those areas into concrete job. One of the reasons why he's saying that he's not really enthused about the prime areas is because of those things. And we need to pay attention to eco-friendly homes. That is the way forward. So we are doing it. When it comes to uh, fraud land, I think the biggest problem for us as salespeople in real estate in Ghana is prejudice. The diaspora believes that, and rightly so, that people are fraudulent. So you must prove yourself. The little opportunity you get, you must make sure that you prove yourself that you are the opposite. So once you can build that credibility with time, people will be able to work with you. Yeah, yeah and I think also with regards to fraudulent activities, you know, you have to implement systems and structure. Final question. Um, in partnerships, collaborations, have you thought about partnering with public transportation to ensure that um, everybody, regardless of where they live and work, have accessibility or road accessibility? On the same infrastructure and in the needs village. So once the community begins to develop, all those things will come back. Because those are business people as well, GBIT, they will come closer, they will bring those things. That's what we are paid on coming together as private people to build our infrastructure. A community of 500 acres. Can you imagine having all the amenities there? The government will be forced to build infrastructure for the city of So that's why we are doing it. So let's build together. Let's try. We cannot compel the government. We can only appeal to them. But as private people, we can come with innovative steps and build something. And the government will say, wow. The British person will say, wow. Drake is doing something, something. That is doing something. The Kennedy is doing something. Then try to do something way. Why not we take infrastructure in that place? But if you don't do anything, leave the land there. You can look as much as you can. So I am joined by Angelique and Lisa, they are the organizers of the Diaspora Africa Conference 2024. I'm so excited. I got here and the environment is looking amazing. I can see people networking and everything. Now I want to hear from you guys. I'm going to start with Angelique. Can you please tell us a little bit about the African Diaspora Conference? For the most part, um, the Diaspora Conference mm -hmm. was built in out of Houston with okay. um, a Diaspora partner, Eze, right. that has really brought together technology, the aspects of technology and infrastructure, yeah. as well as real estate, to build on bringing the diaspora to Africa right. to continue to build relationships and establish technology industry, yeah. real estate industries, and work together okay. to rebuild uh, business in Africa. I see. How long has this initiative been going on for? I think that we've been going on about four years now, yeah. three, wow. three, four years. Four yes, years. there have been a amazing. number of conferences. Mm -hmm. They've gone to Zanzibar yeah. and um, here in Ghana. Okay. And there's a conference, of course, in the U.S. and Houston. Yeah. All right. yes. Lisa, can I ask you this? How do you think this conference, you know, uh, constantly happening in Ghana, how do you think it's going to impact the real estate sector in Ghana? Mm. It's going to impact the real estate sector amazing. Yeah. You know, it's going to open up opportunities, mm -hmm. clear up questions, clear up different things that people are looking for. Yeah. And it's also going to bring a spirit of collaboration mm -hmm. so that people can know what's available. Yeah. Can you highlight on the importance of, you know, diaspora is always finding their roots Absolutely. back to the motherland? It's, it's home. Yeah. <laughs> it's home. Yes. It's home. Home. So it's it's important to although we go into the Western world, we must come back and invest yeah. so that we can continue to grow and scale the country. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's have a good time. Thank you. 
I'm joined by an amazing woman, one of the top forces, you know, charging the way for opportunities for women when it comes to real estate. This is Hannah Atiasi. She is the CEO of eWells. Hello, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. And you? I'm doing amazing, thank you too. So today you were the host and also the moderator for the panel session that we had inside with the nation builders, if I should put it that way. And um, we had a lot of discussions when it came to the problems that we have in the industry and also the solutions as well. First of all, let's just talk about eWells. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the company, how it started and the services that you provide. Wonderful. So eWells Realty and Consultancy has been around for 10 years. Right. We're a real estate brokerage company and we help people, um, the locals, the diasporans yeah. who want to buy, sell, rent, mm -hmm. commercial, residential properties and yeah. that's inclusive of land as well. Yeah. That's amazing. Today we're here especially for the African diaspora and then we also talked about how we can bridge the gap uh, for especially investors, people that are looking forward to investing back in the motherland, you know, finding their roots back home. As the CEO of eWells, how do you think that gap can be bridged and what is the most effective way that you think that companies can, you know, provide transparency so that investors can come down here and do business in Ghana? That's a great question. I think the key thing is to provide channels of investment that people right. know that my investment is being safeguarded this way. So we've started uh, escrow services yeah. where individuals put their funds in a third party account. Mm -hmm. You have the lawyers that perform all the due diligence necessary. Yeah. A lot of people only do it at Lands Commission, mm -hmm. but let me tell you, there are about eight places that right. you need to ensure that the due diligence is, is yes, completed. And so we make sure we do that. Mm -hmm. We uh, implement systems and structures that people are familiar with right. overseas mm -hmm. so that when uh, they come to Ghana, they realize it's the same process I here see. as well. That is amazing. You're venturing into development. That's how come we yes. have eWells Homes, yes. right? Can you tell us a bit about it? Where are you looking to, you know, do some of the developments and what should people expect in general? Yeah, I'm so excited. This is my baby, mm -hmm. eWells Homes. Um, we're actually starting in a yeah. Denta Amanfro area mm -hmm. and um, it's four townhouses yeah. that we'll, we'll be completing. We have three left. So if people are interested they should definitely right. get in touch with us we're so excited it's it's unique people talk about they want greenery they want backyard exactly. space yeah. and uh, we offer customizable backyards uh, with the greenery the the benches outside yes. and also the, the barbecue pit so I yeah. mean we are re-establishing mm -hmm. family yeah. um, in the home I yeah see. that's amazing now finally before you leave us um, what would you say to the women out there I mean you did mention in Side, yeah. that women should be more involved in real estate because the market is mostly dominated by men. I think most people are just scared or they feel like it's not uh, a, uh, a smooth space to deal in. Like there's a lot of difficulties, for, especially when it comes to land acquisition, yeah. you know, litigation, going head to head with a lot of you know top people and all of that. But what advice would you give to them to also you know venture into the real estate space? Get in, get in, get in. That's okay, that, that's the <laughs> advice for women, and it's yeah. twofold, right? I want to see more women actively involved mm -hmm. in the real estate sector, yeah. whether it's property management, facilities management, development, or real estate mm -hmm. brokerage, I want to see more women, yeah. you know? And fortunately, overseas you see, mm -hmm. well, it's fortunate, but it's unfortunate here yeah. in Africa that overseas, over 69% of people in real estate are women. Yeah. And here in Africa, it's less, it's 14. It's 14%. Yeah. And then the other part is the real estate investing. I want to see more women investing. Exactly. Women are waiting for their husbands. They're Don't waiting for their romantic that. partners Come to buy in. properties. Exactly. But get in and invest. Yeah. We see less than 8% mm -hmm. of women owning homes in yeah. Africa. Yeah, and we yeah. want to change that narrative. I know that our audience are wondering, you know, what's the partnership that Royal Kingdom Estates has with yourself and then your company eWells as well? Yeah, you know, I am a big, big believer in partnership. Yeah. I really honor collaborative efforts. Mm -hmm. And with Royal Kingdom Estate, you know, they are, you guys are a trusted <laughs> real estate company, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to land acquisition. Yes. You know, one of the key things 
things that uh, Mr. Danny Angels mentioned is that they ensure that the lands are litigation free and yes. that they are titled. Yes. So we feel comfortable referring our clients exactly. to Royal Kingdom Estate because we know they're going to get value for their yeah. money. That's wonderful. I mean, the scams are too much. We yeah. need to change that narrative. You yeah. can come in here, invest, you know, your money into the motherland and then end returns. It yeah. doesn't have to be anything scary. It doesn't have to be anything overboard. So thank you so much. Thank you. We look forward to more amazing partnerships with you. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Thank, thank you, you so much. All right. <laughs>